Minister of Education addresses the USM class of 2020. Meetings held between Phillipsburg Merchants Association and the St. Martin Police Force. And President of Weifel gives an update on the hotel and timeshare properties. Those are the headlines for Thursday, December the 10th, 2020. Season's greetings, viewers. This is SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. And as usual, we have a full newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, a court case brought against the employees of Little Switzerland has been withdrawn. Lawyers representing the company were seeking the intervention of the court in an effort to dismiss all of the workers. However, on Wednesday last, the attorney representing the Switzerland informed the judge that they didn't wish to continue with the injunction and, as a result, requested that the case be dropped. Just recently, some 23 employees of Little Switzerland, represented by Windward Islands Federation of Labor, WIFO, won an injunction in the court of first instance against the company for salaries owed to them. Since that victory in court, the lawyer representing the workers has placed a lien on the property of Little Switzerland, revealed President of Weifel Theophilus Thompson during a press conference Thursday morning. While speaking at the press briefing, the union boss also addressed the situation regarding workers at Porto Kupakoi as well. We have some updates that has just come to us with regards to a number of companies in the private sector that are represented by the rifle and that we spoke about in our previous uh, meetings. For example, the towers. Since our manifestation, whereby we had a meeting with the Minister of Labor and his, cab and his, and his team, the Towers has since then requested a, a meeting with the union and the shop stewards. So at 2 p.m. Thursday, to the Thursday, they'll be meeting at the Whitehall Center with the general manager of the Towers along with the financial director of the company, the second-hand man Ansari. So we're looking forward for that dialogue and see what will be the outcome. In the meantime, uh, as we know, Little Switzerland lost the first court case that was brought against them towards the employees' non payment of correct or proper salaries. And they, in turn, filed a court case to dismiss all the workers from managers down to every employee. However, uh, yesterday evening, the attorney of Little Switzerland informed the judge that they are going to withdraw that court case. So that court case has been withdrawn. So it means that the movement of the unions protesting against the exploitation of these companies are uh, having an effect on the decisions. However, in the meantime, the attorney representing the workers have moved a step forward to put a lien on properties of Little Switzerland on the island, which was not known publicly. So we are looking forward for the next few days to see what will happen. In the meantime, as we said, uh, Puerto Kupakoi, the Minister of Labor, have instructed the Office of the Mediator to be more active in dealing with that group 
that group of managers who are managing the port of, port of Kupakoi and whereby the homeowners are not in agreement with how they are managing the operation. Dismissing workers without any reason or without the following, following the correct legal procedures. It is important to note that we will not compromise any workers' right, whether towards job security, towards their income, or any rights that is belonging to them. Another thing we like to bring to the attention of the Ministry of Labor, there are many companies on the island who are employed and keeping employed undocumented workers. We have had many complaints recently where workers who have worked for many years, some over 10 years, with those companies, helping them to acquire massive wealth. While the employees are earning some below minimum wage, uh, for us, it's a form of slavery, to be used a very strong term, but exploiting workers to extortion uh, the extortionate uh, tactics of these companies must be looked into and must be stopped. Meanwhile, five workers at Porto Kupakoi have been unlawfully terminated. President of the Wiklu, Mrs. Claire Elshat, elaborated to our newsroom at their weekly press briefing about the layoffs at Porto Kupakoi and the latest update with regards to the workers at the Great Bay Beach Hotel. According to the Wiklu president, the negotiations still have not been concluded, and she expounded further. At Port Kupukoi, five workers have been unlawfully terminated, among which one shop steward who spoke out about industrial relations issues at Port Kupukoi working for the Homeowners Association. The minister was updated about this situation. The minister was requested to look into the working of the Department of Labor. One of the workers unlawfully dismissed who filed a complaint um, with the Labor Office still have not received salaries due to him, whereas another worker who was unlawfully dismissed also reported this to the Labor Office and after one phone call was paid her salary. The minister promised to look into the issues and charged the labor mediator to look into the collective aspect of these unlawful dismissals. The minister proposed for the union to report these kind of complaints and to go to courts on behalf of each individual worker. This could save government money to provide yellow cards to pay for legal aid for each individual worker. The policy department will look into the possibility and follow up in a follow up meeting with the Minister of FESA with the unions. The latest update regarding to Great Bay workers limbo. While since October the 15th, the new owners of the company started negotiations with the Wifel Union to resolve the issues pending with the workers according to their CLA, these negotiations have still not concluded. The company, meanwhile, started to call the workers individually to persuade them to sign a termination and release agreement. The payout proposal of the company wants to terminate the workers and pay them their years of service while they want the workers to sign that they will release all their claims to what is owed to them as unpaid salaries, vacation pay, or vacation days, etc. The union had advised the workers not to sign this termination agreement offered since the negotiations are still ongoing between management and the union. The union has one several court cases against employers who have not paid their workers their full salary after IRMA, not all, and now also 
not during COVID-19 pandemic. So the workers were instructed by management to follow training courses at the St. Martin Training Foundation for a stipend which was less than the regular salary as was stipulated in the CLA. The company does not want to pay the workers the salary owed to them according to the CLA. The payout the company is offering the individual workers is not paying the workers what is due to them. So the Minister of Labor and his staff in the meeting on Monday gone was informed about the CLA violations of management of Great Bay and, and that if no agreement will be reached this week, the union will request government mediation or else support the workers who want to take the company management to court with a yellow card. And in other news, a member of parliament for the U.S. party, Claudia Stonechamp and Camper, speaking to our newsroom recently about the current labor situation, the member of parliament says that St. Martin has been closed for a while and we just cannot sit on our laurels and wish for the best. We need to make sacrifices and that means for everybody. People have so much insecurity and so much insecurity may cause civil unrest. And this is what we need to guard against. The MP expounded further. So imagine the doors have been closed already. So it isn't a matter of not going to close. We have been closed for a while. And the problem is that people have so much insecurity. And insecurity, Ricardo, as, as, as the end of the day, can bring civil unrest. And this is what we have to guard against at all costs. We don't need to have all the solutions. But we cannot just sit on our laurels and hope for the best. That's not going to happen. We're going to have to make the best out of the situation here by making sacrifices where sacrifices need to be made. And that is for everybody. Not only the politicians, not only the government, everybody has to make these sacrifices. But the small man has been hit the hardest thus far because those are the ones that are not getting a salary don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week because nobody is saying anything and that's the issue I have. The Minister of the ESI is going to have to tell us what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And if we don't do that, we are acting for problems at the end of this year and into the new year because the people are going into an uncertainty that's only getting bigger and not smaller. You know, sometimes you, you clearly see in a crisis that certain ministries are too big. When you put labor, health, and social affairs together as one ministry, you then see all the shock coming because it is overwhelming. COVID has overwhelmed the health ministry. It has impacted seriously into the social affairs and into the department. So that is the ministry that has, in my opinion, been overwhelmed the most. And I don't want to go and blame, play the blame game because it's not going to create a solution. The solution is we got to put heads together if we need legislation, then let's create legislation. If we need to take stringent decisions, then we need to take Look, I go and people go all these areas. The mountain has to take care of its own people first. We, we honestly got to this situation. We can whine about it and, and, and hide it and run away from it, but if we don't deal with our immigration issues right now, then we are not going to get out of this situation. I know people don't like to hear it, but sometimes it must be said that the minister has a job to do. She started it as her own government seems to be blocking it. This has to stop. We got to deal with the issues on this island. And if we don't deal with them, Ricardo, we're not going to have a situation on the island. It's that simple. And still to come, keynote speaker at the USM graduation challenges the graduates to seize the opportunity. We'll have the details of that story and much more when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. 
Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News, and I am Valerie von Putten. As we continue now in other news, the University of St. Martin held its 26th annual commencement exercises ceremony on Saturday, December the 5th. Observing COVID-19 protocol, this year's graduation ceremony took place at the Bel Air Community Center, where some 28 students received their associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and or a professional certificate. The event was held under the theme Adapt, Endure, and Succeed. On hand for the momentous occasion was the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, Dr. Anders Rodolph Samuel, board members of USM, as well as parents and friends of the graduates of Class 2020. This graduation is different and more special than previous graduations because of the COVID-19 situation. From one day to the next, the situation on the island of St. Martin changed. And so did the situation regarding the University of St. Martin. You, the graduates, you had to adapt to that change. I know it could not have been easy. The situation was different for everyone, not only here on St. Martin. When I look at the class of 2020, I see persons who are different in age, occupation, and who have started their studies because of different reasons. All of these different circumstances make graduation, graduating this evening, something different for each of you. Some of you might continue on to another level of education, and some of you might continue on with a job for now. With all of those personal differences, there are some things in life that is the same for all of us. One of the things of life that is for everyone the same is that every day we are given 24 hours. Look at the person next to you and say 24 hours. You can do whatever you want to do with those 24 hours. Under normal circumstances, your day is divided into three times eight hours. Normally, each one of you, each one of us, would sleep eight hours and go to school or work eight hours. That is 16 hours. Therefore, if you sleep eight hours and you work eight hours, you will still have eight hours to utilize. And the keynote address was delivered by a former student of the University of St. Martin, Dr. Shireen Daniel. She reminded the graduating class that St. Martin will not only need their talent and professional capabilities, but their courage, insight, and compassion. With those qualities and with the education you completed today, you have the opportunity to chart a new course, she told the USM graduating class of 2020, adding that I hope you seize that opportunity. I struggle to put 
into words the waves of emotions passing through me at this moment. I feel truly blessed, humble, and grateful to be here at my alma mater to celebrate achievements in academics and what for many is another chapter in an ongoing journey. Please believe me when I say I am truly honored to be here. To you, the USM class of 2020 graduates, thank you for letting me share this amazing day with you. It is, of course, you, our graduates, who bring us all here together. We recognize your hard work, your commitment, your achievements. You deserve to enjoy the moment, to savor it, and to remember it always. And though we would like to take credit for all your impressive qualities and accomplishments, we readily admit today that the people who had the most to do with you getting to this point in life are your parents and families. They supported you, they believed in you, and they dreamed of this day for you long before you dreamed of it for yourself. So before we go any further, let's hear it for the people who truly made this day possible, your family. As I stand here tonight, I make special mention of families because of how important mine were and are to me during my professional journey. My mother and father were always involved in pushy, sometimes quite irritable. However, pushy in a positive sense. They pushed me to always strive to be more of myself, to strive to achieve the highest academic achievements, to not give up because I was a woman seeking to excel in male dominant spheres, but rather to excel and conquer because I am a woman. You know, my dad used to say to me, can't can never be found in a dictionary. That word is nowhere in the dictionary. Therefore, excellence is a must. And speaking to you as a graduate of USM in 2006, and a member of the board of directors of this great institution only adds to the great sense of pride I feel. USM is my foundation. Let me rephrase, USM is my solid foundation. And SXM Daily News will bring you more of Dr. Shireen Daniels address in tomorrow's broadcast. And in other news, the Central Dispatch received several calls about a man being injured after a fight early Wednesday morning, December the 9th, around 7 a.m. on the Marigot Hill Road. At the Marigot Hill Road location, the officers encountered a man with the initials G.O. sitting on the ground, suffering from severe lacerations to his head. The victim was treated on the scene by paramedics and then rushed to the Samaritan Medical Center in serious condition. While the victim was being treated at the location on Marigot Hill Road, the man with the initials A.D.B. appeared on the scene and informed the officers that he had fought with the victim and had ill-treated him with a stone. He was immediately arrested without incident and brought to the police station in Phillipsburg, where he is being held for questioning. Now, turning to our weather forecast for December the 10th, 2020, patches of low-level clouds drifting in the wind flow may cause cloudy periods and possible showers across the region during this forecast period. The high surf advisory for St. Martin has been canceled as long period swells are gradually subsiding. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to continue exercising caution. So the outlook through Saturday midday, fair to partly cloudy with a few brief local showers possible. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, 
meeting between the Phillipsburg Merchants Association and St. Martin Police Force. I'll have a detail to that story when SXM Daily News returns. The innovative Banco Medico Contactless Smart Card. Your Banco Medico Smart Card is now equipped with a contactless feature for payments, so get ready to tap and go. Contactless payments are fast, easy, secure, and accepted worldwide at all Maestro enabled contactless terminals. Tap for transactions equivalent to or less than 100 NAV, or the US dollar equivalent. You will receive notifications via email anytime you tap. Tap, tap, and pay fast, fast with WIB. For more information, visit our website at wib-bank.net. Tap and go with your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News. And as we continue now with this COVID-19 update, as of December the 9th, there were 24 persons who tested positive for COVID-19. However, there was a recovery rate of six persons, bringing the total active cases to 112. The total number of confirmed cases is now 1,185. The Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 106 people in home isolation. Six patients remain hospitalized at the St. Martin Medical Center. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 26. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin has increased to 1,047. 179 people are in quarantine based on contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS of persons who may have been in contact with any of the active cases. The Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, VSA, the airport health team in collaboration with the Healthcare Laboratory St. Martin HCLS has tested 1,591 travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport, and CPS has tested 8,306 people throughout the community. As the numbers continue to fluctuate, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. With the holidays approaching, it is imperative that you continue to wear your mask, maintain a social distance of two meters, practice good hand hygiene, and refrain from mass gatherings. If we continue to see an increase in the numbers, drastic measures will be taken once again in effort to reduce further spread of the virus. And as we end this edition of SXN Daily News for this evening, the Phillipsburg Merchants Association and the members of the St. Martin Police Force, KPSM, held a preparatory meeting on Wednesday about the upcoming end of the year busy season. During that meeting at the Phillipsburg Police Station, the police management team was informed that the businessmen in Phillipsburg were preparing to reopen most of the businesses in the town area. They are also wanted to be informed about the safety plans being implemented by the police for Phillipsburg. The points that were discussed during the meeting were the busy upcoming Christmas season, security aspects in the city center of Phillipsburg, parking in Phillipsburg, and safe transition from the year 2020 to 2021. Both parties went over the details for this upcoming season to ensure that all are on the same page in terms of regulations and safety procedures for our capital. And with that, viewers, it brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie from Putin. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to sinmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you so much for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow. <music>